Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the third week of Lent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute, and when the demon had gone out, the mute person spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For if you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons, if I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we are in Luke's gospel. As I say, during Lent, a lot of times we're bouncing around here. And today we're dealing with a, a very interesting place in Scripture where we have Jesus driving out uh, a demon that had basically uh, possessed an individual and really caused him to be mute. And in driving out the demon, the man was freed, of course, that he could again speak. And his critics began to look at that, and, and they began to accuse him that it was by the power of Beelzebul, which is another name for Satan, the prince of demons, he's driving out demons. And so they're saying, well, he's using the power of the devil to drive out the demons. And basically, what Jesus is saying to them at that point is, that's just ridiculous. That is just crazy. Why would Satan cast out his demons? That, that's like uh, having uh, a house divided. If he's driving out the demons, then he's basically lessening his own power and authority. And he says, every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste. And he says, that is silly to say that it's by the devil. And um, he went on to say, and if it's by the devil that I do it, who's doing it when you try to uh, cast out demons? And again, he's, he's using the, uh, the ridiculous uh, assertion that they have made and say it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And um, then he goes on to talk about the fact, but when a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. And when the stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. In other words, okay, we know that Satan has power, um, but God is even more powerful. And uh, he even talks about if it's by the finger of God. In other words, it's not just that God has to force the demon out or push him out or uh, exert a lot of energy. The finger of God casts out a demon. <clears throat> it shows the difference in power. And so even though a strong man can be fully armed, even though the devil may be fully armed and have all of his demons at his beck and call to work, the minute that God comes, they are vanquished. He can take away their armor. He can take away what they're doing and divide the spoils. And again, at the end, he makes this very, uh, very powerful assertion. And again, he's really challenging these critics, mostly made up of scribes and Pharisees, the rulers of the Jewish people spiritually. And he's saying, whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. In other words, uh, 
if you're not on board, then you're working against what my purpose is and place is here in this world. And the inference is, when you begin to talk like you're talking, when you're talking about how uh, that I'm doing it by the power of the devil, when you're making these assertions, uh, you're against me. And while uh, I am gathering people for God, you're causing them to scatter. And basically, you're becoming a tool of the very devil himself. So a, a strong assertion here about uh, Jesus and his power and authority. And again, uh, when we think about our lives, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The invitation for all of us as we continue to walk with him is continue to link our hearts with his, to be his disciple. And as he gathers, we too are involved in that gathering. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, is there a takeaway? I think there are several takeaways. I think one of the takeaways is to look at our own lives and at lives and, and just see if there are areas where we're bound, areas where maybe uh, we have allowed the enemy to have too much ground and he's built some things into our hearts uh, some hardness or some uh, habits, whatever it might be. And, and uh, to remember that we have the power of God on our side, that we can call upon him, and he is there to help us, to guide us, and to direct us in all the ways that, uh, that he has uh, that power and authority in our lives. So it's, it's really good for us to think about that. And also, you know, are we on Jesus' side? Are we uh, with him in the various areas of our life? Or are there areas where we need to give ourselves over to him more completely, more perfectly, and more beautifully? So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>